Good afternoon. Uh, we gather today in God's presence to remember and give thanks for the life of Eleanor Van Gelder, to support each other in a time of need, and to affirm God's love for us. We ask that God would grant us grace, that we would find comfort and hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We come into the presence of the Lord, for our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We find comfort in God's Son, who spoke these words, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Let's follow for God in prayer. God, we come before you today with sorrow in our hearts that, that Eleanor has departed this life, but we also come with joy. We come with joy because we know that her suffering is over, that she's returned home to be with you and your loving arms. We pray that in our grief, you would make us especially aware of your presence, that we might feel the comfort of your Holy Spirit, that we might be strengthened through the power of your word, and we might rejoice in the hope that is provided by your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to uh, sing uh, one of the songs at this time. Uh, they're found in the insert of your program. The first one we're going to sing this afternoon is The Solid Rock. Scripture is filled with the good news that we that we belong to God, and that that's not a momentary thing, but it's a, it's an eternal thing. Hear these words from Scripture. It says, "I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end He will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see Him with my own eyes. I am not another. How my heart yearns within me." And the psalmist says, "The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid?" One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I see, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And Psalm 67, my soul rests in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, gives us promises that this is found in Jesus Christ. He says, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? 
We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. And Peter, the, the apostle, says, Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power. These scriptures remind us of the, the promise that we are held by God. I want to read a passage now from 2 Corinthians that, that I want us to focus on a little bit. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, writes these words. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All this for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Now we know that the earthly, if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built. These words by the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians, they remind us where we find our hope and strength each and every day. And especially at times when we have to say goodbye to a loved one where we rely on our faith in Jesus Christ. As followers of Jesus Christ, we believe that he died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and three days later, he was raised from the dead by God the Father. It's the essence of our faith, a faith that fills us with hope, a faith that fills us with encouragement because of the promise that the same God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead promises to raise us to eternal life through his glorious grace. A life where there are no more tears, no more death, no more crying, no more pain. This promise has been fulfilled for Helen. She placed her faith and trust in Jesus Christ. She followed him with her life. She believed in the promise of eternal life. Eleanor's faith in Jesus Christ gives us a sense of comfort because even as we go through this time of sorrow, as we, even as we go through a time of loss, we can, we can even look forward to and anticipate the time when we will be reunited in a perfect form with those who have gone before us. One of the reasons we are here today is to remember the life that Eleanor lived and the experiences that, that you enjoyed with her. And as you mentioned, she loved to read, to do crossword puzzles, play cards, and other games. Um, the memories of family vacation spent at Otter Tail, even if the original suggestion was met with some skepticism, they were, they were years of joy. She didn't really like to cook, but you survived. Right? <laughs> <laughs> she loved to garden, even if her garden would never win aesthetically pleasing oats or anything like that, food still came up. Uh, and it's those two things also that, that make this poem that Eleanor Watt read ironic and yet fitting at the same time. This poem is entitled Mother's Garden. And it says, I remember my mother's garden with neat vegetables row after row, grown to supply food for a hungry family, how her vegetables did grow. She struggled to protect her precious seeds as weeds invaded her garden domain. She vigorously wielded a well-used hoe, meanwhile scanning the sky for rain. Tucked away in the garden's far corner, a righteous flower garden grew, petunias, daisies, phlox, and zinnias, sporting colors of every hue. Each day, mother quickly gathered the vegetables, but lingered longer over the floral show. You see, her vegetables were food for her body, but her flowers were food for her soul. Eleanor's garden grew food, even if it wasn't neat and tidy in all of the rows. But maybe it was more about the journey, the process. The refreshment of the soul that was found there. And that's what we receive from God. It's been written there are points in life when we are hurting, the situation is clearly outside of our control. We can't detect so much as a glimmer of relief or of the future. And at times like that, we we can what can we be sure of? But that God is with us in our troubles. 
that God has a purpose for our own trials and we are called to live a life of faith. It also means we're called to believe God's promises even when our circumstances confound us, when trouble surrounds us. Remember what is true, that God will never leave you, God will never forsake you, and his good purposes will always be carried out. Which is why we find such comfort in God's word, because it is food for our soul. Paul wrote, therefore, even though our hearts are heavy, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. To know Eleanor was to know that the last years were difficult. Outwardly, her physical body seemed to be wasting away. However, with that is the promise that inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Now, maybe we couldn't see it. Maybe it couldn't be communicated by her. I believe this to be true, that outwardly Eleanor may have been wasting away. Her memory may not have been there, but inwardly. God continued to renew her with his love. Her faith and trust in the Lord was being fulfilled. Paul says in verses 17 and 18, our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, what is unseen is eternal. The things that are seen, the things that we recognize in this world may not always go the way that we want or expect or hope. But that which is unseen, that which is eternal sustains us, protects us, guides us, and gives us hope. And the thing that is eternal is God's love for us, a love so great that he would send his only son into the world that we would have the promise that we would never die. That we might have forgiveness of sins, eternal life with him. God's love never fades, it never fails. We're told elsewhere in scripture there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can take that from us. No trials or tribulations of this world can remove his love. No supernatural beings, no powers, no distance, no creation, nothing current, nothing future. It also means that illness cannot separate us from the love of God. God never once leaves us. God's love for Eleanor remains steadfast and steady. And we're told that not even death can remove us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's no greater promise than that. That the love of God remains with us for all eternity. When we love God, when we follow Christ, death is not the end. It's, it's the beginning of being in the eternal home that he has prepared for us. That's the message of the gospel that the Lord held on to. It's the message revealed throughout scripture that God continues to display his love. And he renews us each day. Even now, God continues to show his love to him. The last verse of the passage says, we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. That's the promise for anyone who believes. A home that amazingly outweighs anything here on earth is made for us by God. Because of her faith in Jesus Christ, Eleanor has received an eternal home in heaven. God's promises provide us with, with comfort when we are faced with things we don't want to go through, things we don't understand. And with that comes the hope that we will one day see our loved ones again. God's love makes the words of 2 Corinthians so powerful that say, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are renewed day by day. And we have this promise of a home for all eternity. Let's bow before God. God, we do ask for your comfort. It's never easy to give up one that we love, even, even when there's been times of struggle and, and, and pain and suffering. So we do so with sadness, we do so with tears, and we know that you understand that. But we also ask that you would be with us and fill us with your presence, that you would continue to comfort us. Remind us of your love that never fails, your love that never leaves us, never forsakes us. Your love that walks with us each and every step of the way, even through the valley of the shadow of death. And remind us that Salvation provides us with victory. Victory over death itself. As we spend all of eternity with a God who has loved us so much. So we ask that you would remind us of that love over and over again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing our second song now. It's on the back side of that same sheet. And it's what a day that will be. What a what a day that will be, and sometimes we, we don't think of the great celebration, but it is a celebration when we experience God's love and all its glory. What a day that will be.
Grant you his hope. May you go from here knowing that you are loved by a great God. In the name of God, Father, Son. 